In this problem, a tapered beam with a rectangular cross section is fixed at a wall. The beam length is L, thickness is T, and the height of the beam changes from 2A on the left to 2B on the right. Our task is to determine the reaction forces at the wall if the beam is made of a material whose specific weight is gamma. In this problem, I would like to demonstrate how the distributed loads appear from scratch. Uh, therefore, I will have to go through identifying infinitesimal elements, define sums involving those elements, and finally integration. Let me begin with showing a three-dimensional view of the beam and let me identify a cross-section. The cross-section is located at a distance x from the left section and the center of that section is denoted by O. So I will assign to this cross-section the height h, which is x-dependent, and the thickness t, which is uniform through the beam and therefore does not depend on x. The two-dimensional view of the cross-section is shown here. That's the base T, which appears to be perpendicular to the plane of the slide on this picture, and h of x is the fact. For calculations, it's easier, of course, to deal with the two-dimensional view where I introduce the coordinate system with the origin at O. The x-axis measured from left to right. And here we have h of x to A on the left to B on the right, and the beam length is L. Now let me calculate h of x. I will begin with observing that h of x must be a linear function simply because the cross-section is bounded by straight lines. Therefore, I simply express h of x as alpha x plus beta, where alpha and beta are parameters to be determined. To determine those parameters, I observe that h of 0 which is on the left end, is equal to 2a. If I substitute h of x into this equation, I will get that beta is equal to 2a. Similarly, on the right end, h of l is equal to 2b, which gives me the second equation for the parameters alpha and beta. And now I can solve two equations for two unknowns, determine alpha and beta, and this gives me the expressions for the height h of x in terms of a, b, and l, and the cross-sectional area a of x. Next, let me look at an elementary volume of thickness delta x, and uh, this volume could be associated with a prism shown here. So delta x is the dimensional along the x-axis, t is the thickness, and h of x is the height. So in dark gray, you can see the cross-section that was identified on the previous slide. Of course, the calculations for delta v is very simple. It's a rectangular prism, so the volume is easily computed. And also, I can obtain the weight of this elementary volume simply by multiplying the specific weight times the volume. Now I'm ready to proceed with the free body diagram. On the left, I show two forces, OX, OY, associated with the translational constraints and the couple associated with the rotational constraints. Now, the weight of the beam is introduced as a set 
of elementary forces, delta V, and each force associated with an elementary slice of thickness delta X, and I can think about the first slide centered at delta X over 2, then some generic slide delta V centered at XI, and finally the last slice is centered at uh, the distance L minus delta X over 2. Now I can write down the equilibrium equation. Of course, some of the forces on X implies that O X is equal to zero. Some of the forces on Y involves the reaction force O Y minus some of the elementary forces delta W. And the sum involves all the slices shown here. And it is recorded here by using W of X I. Similarly, for the moment equation, I have the couple counterclockwise and all elementary forces delta W have negative moments and the arm for each force is XI. Now, to evaluate the last two equations, I need to deal with the sums. Let me begin with the first sum. So the sum over the forces is equal to the sum over gamma delta V. Each delta V is expressed uh, under the conditions that it's an elementary rectangular prism. And so I observe that gamma T is constant for every prism and therefore I can take it outside of the sum and I have the sum of H of Xi delta X. It's a Riemann sum. This Riemann sum could be converted to the integral. So gamma T is constant outside of the integral and instead of the sum we simply write integral from 0 to L H of X dx since H of X is a linear function the integration is very simple and it leads to the answer that the sum of the elementary forces is gamma T A plus B times L and one can note that this is equal to the weight of the beam which is of course not surprising. Next I can deal in a very similar manner with the second sum. The only difference is I really have to carry this xi now. And this difference really spells itself in the integral where instead of integrating h of x dx I integrate x h of x dx. So it means now instead of integrating a linear function I have to integrate a quadratic function. Still pretty simple and we end up with this result. And uh, now if we take this expression and this expression and go back to the equilibrium equations we will get the desired result that the vertical reaction is equal to the weight or gamma T A plus B times L and the couple is given by this expression.